Hi everyone! So, how are you? How's the midterm examination? So, I hope you find it well and you answered and performed very well in our midterm examination. So, um, this will be the first topic or the first coverage of the final examination. So, um, for today's discussion, we will talk about the assessment in the effective domain. So, in the Bloom's taxonomy, there are three domains of learning were identified as the cognitive domain, the psychomotor, and the affective domain. So, when we say cognitive domain, this includes the mental skills or the knowledge. So, when we say affective domain, this dwells on growth in feelings or emotional areas. So, for example, feelings, our emotions, and the attitude. So, while the psychomotor domain, this is concerned with manual or the physical skills, or in short, these are our skills. So, the three domains of learning are the KSA. So, don't forget the three domains of learning is the KSA that stands for the knowledge, skills, and attitude. So, again, KSA stands for knowledge, skills, and attitude. So, in this chapter, um, we shall be concerned with the affective domain for the balance um, education, let us not pay attention only to the development of mind or we focused our atten attention on the cognitive and the hands or our the physical activities or uh, in our physical skills. So let us also give attention to the development of the heart, which is the affective. So for the Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul. So indeed, what does it a profit a man or a woman if he or she accumulates a lot of wealth with the use of his or her mind or our cognitive and the hands which is our psychomotor. So if he or she is not happy or has no sense of fulfillment or um, we pertain it as our affective. So, we have heard also the saying of he, she is schooled but not educated. So, this statement points to the fact much of what has happened in the education process was focused on the cognitive development. But today, however, we talk about the whole child approach or the social and emotional learning so um we will talk about the social emotional learning and also the emotional quotient that stands for the eq and the positive discipline and growth mindset which deliver the same um, basic message the equally important effective function of education so again sel stands for the social and emotional learning the eq for emotional quotient and the positive discipline and growth mindness mindset so navarro and santos assert that um, we have here the effective domain is the least studied and most often overlooked domain in educational literature despite the fact that almost every researcher or author begins with a premise on the importance of the effective domain in the teaching learning process. So the reason perhaps is the fact that the effective domain is the most nebulous and the hardest to evaluate among Bloom, Bloom's three domains. So however, it is important to realize that by tapping the potentials of the effective domain and enhancing learning, we increase the likelihood of real and authentic learning among our students. Similarly, students may experience effective roadblocks to learning that can neither be recognized nor solved when using a purely cognitive approach. So, 
Um, indeed, uh, learning is not only a cognitive process, it is also an emotional process. So, research shows that SEL not only improves achievement by an average of 11 percentile points, but it also increases prosocial behavior, so such as kindness, sharing, and empathy, and also improves a student's attitude towards school and reduces depression and strength or stress among students. So, the five key skills of SEL, um, namely, as number one is the self-awareness, the self-management, the social awareness, relationship skills, um, and responsible decision-making. So, let us start with discussing the soft skills in effective assessment. So, learning outcomes in the affective domain include the soft skills in contrast to the hard skills or what we call the um, technical skills. So, in the soft skills, these are the non-technical skills that refer to how one works in the workplace, how one interacts with others in the workplace, and how one looks at problems and solve problems. So, Let's proceed to the categories of soft skills. So we have here the five key skills of SEL that can be grouped into four categories that most school leaders, teachers, and parents would agree um, are within the responsibility of schools to, man to monitor and develop. So these are the social skills, the self-management skills, the academic soft skills, and the approaches to learning. So, the social skills include how a student interacts with other students as observed by teachers and other um, adults. So, let's proceed to the um, self-management. So, when we say social skills, again, uh, this is include how the students interact with others um, and it is also observed by the teachers and other adults most especially your parents and your siblings inside your home next is we have the self-management so this refers to self-regulation and for example the student's ability to take control over what would otherwise be automatic reactions by planning focusing attention refraining experience and using mental tools so again when we say self-management that is the self regulation next is the third category is the academic soft skills also before we proceed to the third one um let me uh, just share to you the consequences if we have a uh, lack of self-management so the lack of self-management is manifested when a student blurts out responses which suggest a lack of thoughtfulness. So that is the lack of the example of lack self management. Next is academic soft skills. So this is the third category that are both social and cognitive. So the defining feature is their um ancillary role in carrying out traditional academics. So for example, the ability to work independent. Lee. So finally, we have the uh, fourth category, which is the approaches to learning. So this includes things as the student's engagement in school, the pleasure in learning, and anxiety about the performance. So in here, we have the uh, figure that is the observable behaviors of soft skills. So, um, in social skills, we have uh, we can observe by, by their behavior if they uh, perform or behave um, to the following. For example, provides peers with positive feedback, offers help or assistance to peers, initiates interactions with peers, um, participates in discussion with peers, 
has a sense of humor, shares amusement with peers, has friends, can carry out leadership activities, engages in appropriate social behavior. So this talks about the um, socialization, interaction to the other individual. So these are the sample behavior, the sample observable behavior under social skills. So we have also the self-management. So in a self-management, um, one controls displays of temper when angry accepts legitimate rules um compri compromises with others to avoid conflict um we have response in socially appropriate ways to criticism from others and handles teasing and social provocations cooperate with others maintains attention to tasks and it is respectful to teachers and staff so as you can see here the observable behavior um, talks about mostly about how to handle yourself or ourselves within the situation. So, for example, here in the first statement, which controls displays of temper when angry. So, we have to manage your, um, in, you know, your emotions in a situation. Uh, for example, here, compromises with others too. Avoid conflict. So, to avoid conflict, you have to, again, manage your emotions. So, that is the self-management. Next is we have the academic soft skills, which is also one of the categories under the soft skills. So, these are the observable behavior. Number one is works independently, completes assigned tasks, listen to and carries out teacher directions, produces work of acceptable quality for ability level, brings, uh, requires materials to school, arrives at school on time and without undue absences, asks for assistance as needed or asks questions, and use appropriate study skills. So as you can see here, it talks about uh, the academic aspects um, of your behavior inside the school or how to um, or how to make a good performance when it comes to your academic matters. The last category of soft skills is the approaches to learning. So these are the observable behavior. Enjoy school, takes on challenging tasks, has confidence in abilities, works hard, is enthusiastic and adventurous, and is involved with extracurricular school activities. So in relation to assessment, the low level of abstraction and high level of um, observability of the student behavior like those given um, in the table have two important practical advantages. So that is first uh, is that it is easy for teachers and other adults who are regularly around individual students to experience directly what is asked of them to score. So, for example, does the child have friends uh, without the requirement for an investment in training? The second is that low scores on a particular item for a particular student or group of students have obvious implications for intervention. So, for example, students who have low scores on confidence in abilities and willingness to work hard may benefit from growth mindset training. So students who are frequently late in class or absent from school may need counseling and an intervention with parents. So students who are aggressive with peers and quick to anger may benefit from training on how to think about and reframe the actions of others before reacting automatically. So the administrators and the teachers can identify both individual students and classrooms that need additional help. So for example, a classroom in which a lot, a lot of students are receiving low scores on self-management skills is a classroom in which the teacher needs help in the classroom. So again, these are the observable, some of the observable behaviors under the four categories of soft skills. So now let's proceed to the 
uh, taxonomy of educational objectives. So, the taxonomy in the affective domain contains a large number of objectives in the literature expressed as interests, attitudes, appreciations, values, and emotional sets of biases. So, the descriptions of each step in the taxonomy called from um, Kratwold's Taxonomy of Affective Domain. So, these are the taxonomy of educational objectives. Number one is we have the receiving. So, when we say receiving, this is being aware of or sensitive to the existence of certain ideas, materials, or phenomena and being willing to tolerate them. So, for example, um, you may use the um, phrase or um, that includes, for example, to differentiate, to accept, to listen for, and to respond to. That is the example of receiving. Next is we have the responding. So this is being committed in some small measure to the ideas materials, or phenomena involved by actively responding to them. So, for example, to comply with, to follow, to command, to volunteer, to spend leisure time in, or to acclaim. Next is we have the organization. So, when we say organization, this is relating the value to those already held and bring it into our harmonious and internally consistent philosophy. So, for example, to discuss, to theorize, to formulate, to balance, and to examine. Next is we have the characterization. So, by value or value set is to act consistently in accordance with the values he or she has internalized. So, for example, to revise, to require, to be related high in the value, to avoid, to resist, to manage, and to Resolve. So, these are the taxonomy of educational objectives. So, we have the receiving, responding, the organization, and characterization. So, next we have the six levels of educational objectives. Oh, um, I forgot to... Um, I forgot to include the valuing here in the taxonomy of educational objectives. So, please take note. So, when we say valuing, this is, uh, uh, please listen very carefully. When we say valuing, um, this is the uh, willingness to be perceived by others as attaching importance to certain ideas, materials, or the phenomena. So, for example, to increase measured proficiency in, to relinquish, to subsidize, to support, or to um, debate. So, again, when we say valuing, this is the willingness to be perceived by others as attaching importance to certain ideas, materials, or the phenomenon. So, we have here the six levels of educational objectives. So, for example, here... Um, to make more uh, details of the six levels. So, for example, in receiving, our definition here is being aware of attending to something in the environment. The example here is the individual will read a book passage about civil rights. So, of course, by reading a book about something, you receive or you learn something from the civil rights book. And through reading, you become aware to the latest current issues or news happen in the environment. Next is responding. So, showing some new behaviors as a result of experience. So, for example, individual would answer questions about book, read another book by the same author, and another book about civil rights or um, etc. So again, in responding, you show some new behaviors as a result of experience. And because you learned something to, to the certain book you have read, you read another book 
by the same author. And then another book with the same topic, for example, as the civil rights. Because in the first book, you became interested, you learned something, and then you tried another um, book similar to the first book you've read. Next is the valuing. So, um, showing some definite involvement of commitment. So, for example, the individual might demonstrate this by voluntarily attending a lecture on civil rights. So, in valuing by its own term, um, of course, you give values or you make uh, or give importance to, for example, a certain type of a certain type of topic, which is the civil rights. Next is the organization. So, integrating a new value into one's general set of values, giving it some ranking among among one's general priority. So, for example, the individual might arrange a civil rights rally. So, because you already receive and you respond and you give importance to the civil rights and now you make, you wanted to make an organization or um, to arrange a civil rights rally. So, next is the characterization by value. So, acting consistently with the new value. So, the individual is firmly committed to the value, perhaps becoming a civil rights leader. So, because uh, you receive or you learn something about the civil rights, you become involved and you already experience a new behavior with regards to civil rights, you give importance and you value uh, the new behaviors or the new experience or the new learning regarding the civil rights, you are now organizing an event or an activity that concerns the civil rights and now you continue or you consistently doing the va the values or the the knowledge you've gained from the um, subject matter which is the civil rights okay so these are the six levels of educational objectives so the teachers usually find difficulty in the use of the behavioral terms when they formulate learning outcomes in the affective domain so these are the examples of verbs or behavioral verbs um appropriate for the um affective domain so for example in receiving we have here to accept, attend, develop, and recognize. When we say responding, complete, comply, cooperate, discuss, examine, obey, respond. In valuing, accept, defend, devote, pursue, and seek. In organization, we have decodify, discriminate, display, order, organize, systematize, weigh, and in characterization, we have the internalize and verify. So, um, an analysis of the taxonomy of educational objectives in the affective domain shows that assessment in the affective domain is on the soft skills. So, we have here the methods of assessing learning in the affective domain. So, change in attitude, values, and habits is the end result of affective domain or the affective um, teaching learning in the affective domain. So, change in attitude as manifested in our change of beliefs, um, feelings, aspirations, and attitudes towards something or someone. So, these changes in our beliefs and values in turn have an impact on our level of motivation and concept of self-efficacy. So, the student um, himself or herself knows the changes that are taking place or can be observed by a third party who is a witness of the change like the teacher or the parents or the classmates. So, a popular method of assessing learning in the affective domain is the observation. So, has a student um, imbibed the value of the punctuality or the one way to know is to observe if he she comes to school on time. So, another way is to observe if he or she submits 
subject requirements on time or for his or her appointments arrive on time. So, uh, Macmillan gives three feasible methods of assessing learning on learners' development in the affective domain. So, the first on the list is the teacher observation. So, the other one is the student self-report and the peer rating. So, these methods of assessing of learning in the affective method make use of tools such as the Likert scale, the semantic differential, the checklist, and the sentence completion. So, we will discuss this after the methods of affective um, assessment. So, let's first define or let's first um, discuss the teacher observation. So, in the teacher observation, um, it can be unstructured or destructured. So, it is unstructured when observation is open-ended. So, the teacher's observation is not limited to items in a checklist or rating scale. So, when we say teacher observation um, is structured, when he or she is guided in what to observe by a checklist or rating scale. So, to, the, to make the teacher observation work in a relationship to the assessment of effective learning. So, we have here the following that, uh, the, teacher, that the teacher should be observed. So, number one is determine behaviors to be observed in advance. So, record students' important data such as time, data, and Place. So, if unstructured, record brief descriptions of relevant behavior. So, keep interpretation separate from description. Record both positive and negative behaviors, not just the positive behavior. So, you must include also the negative behavior. So, have as much observation of each student is necessary. So, avoid personal bias. So, avoid discrimination, favoritism. So, you must be um, objective. So, uh, what you see or what you observe to the behavior of the student, you must record it as it is. So, it's not just because um, what one student is your favorite student. So, even he or she behave improper inside the classroom you record it as a proper manner or just like that it's because um he or she is your favorite so you must avoid personal bias so immediate record the observation so of course once you observe the behavior uh you must record it um in a timely manner so apply a simple and efficient procedure so avoid complex and very complicated procedures in observing your students. Next is the student self-report. So, um, before I forgot, so a student may also do observation of a classmate or peer, so not just the teacher. So, for um, his or her peer observation to be reliable like the teacher, the overall purpose of the observation must be made clear okay um in a student self-report um this requires the student to provide an account of his or her attitude or feelings toward a concept or idea or a people so a self-report is also referred to as the written reflection so don't forget so when we say self-report that is also the written reflection so a teacher may require a student to write his thoughts on topics like why I like or dislike physics or why I like or dislike coming to school. So, a student self-report can also be derived by way of a student interview or by way of a questionnaire and survey. So, the teacher may interview a student on whether the student likes or hates physics as a subject and well, one advantage of the interview is teacher can probe into the answer of the student's 
right there and then. So, another means to derive a student self-report is by way of a survey and a questionnaire. So, this survey and questionnaire can make use of the constructed response format like an essay. So, why is physics my favorite subject or why is the physics my pet peeve? So, maybe the title of the an, uh, an essay that the teacher asked the student to write about to determine the student's attitude toward physics. Or, the teacher may get a student self-report by means of a selected response format by means of assessment tools such as the checklist, the rating scale, or the Likert scale, or a semantic differential scale. So, as we've mentioned, these are the Another means of um, assessing the student self-report by using the peer rating. So, when we say peer ratings, um, this is, uh, for example, how else may a teacher know if a student is real realizing the intended learning outcome in the effective domain other than teacher observing the student or the student making a report about him or herself so the another way of the asking students peer to rate him or her on effective items where teacher wants to rate the student so ideally uh, teacher observation of a student's realization of effective learning outcome should coincide with the student's self-report and that of peer rating of the students so, many times, it does uh, not happen. So, however, um, so what is a more reliable way of assessing effective learning outcomes? So, in short, in a peer ratings, uh, you rate or you rate your peers. So, that is um, when it comes to his or her effective domain. So, in effective assessment tools, uh, there are different methods of assessing the uh, learning or development in the affective domain. So, these are the observation, the student self-report, the peer ratings, makes use of assessment tools such as the Likert scale, semantic differential checklist, and um, sentence completions, and students written reflex, reflection, just like I've mentioned earlier. So, when we say Likert scale, again, um, when we say these are the following assessment, this is included in the peer rating. So, when we are talking about the peer ratings, we usually um, use this, the following. So, the Likert scale and etc. So, when we say Likert scale, this uh, is one of the example of the rating scale that it makes use of a five-point scale from strongly disagree, agree, um, Undecided, agree, and strongly agree. So, for example, here, um, we are assessing the student's attitude toward teaching as a profession to determine each student's attitude toward teaching after a lesson on teaching as a profession. So, this is the direction. Each statement is supposed to measure your attitude toward teaching as a profession. Indicate your response with a check. So, this is the legend. So, uh, if, uh, for example, in the first statement, you strongly agree and then you put um, check or you put a mark in the five column or the column that indicates the strongly agree or five. If you are strongly disagree and then you put mark in the column of strongly disagree. So, um, in the sentence completion, this is another method of peer ratings. So, as the name implies, the student is asked to complete a given incomplete um, sentence related to the intended learning outcome. So, this is the method. This method is based on the idea that sentence completion will reveal more than more about thoughts, fantasies, and emotional conflicts than testing with the direct 
questions. So if the intended learning outcome for a lesson on assessment is, for example, to demonstrate a positive attitude toward assessment, this may be given for each student to complete. So for example, assessment is, and then you complete the sentence. That is the sentence completion. Next, another method of the peer rating is what we call the semantic differential. So the student here is asked to assess, for example, his um, science class as a whole by way of the semantic differential scale so uh, we will discuss the table um we will discuss the table after so this when we say semant semantic differential this is the scales are pairs of adjectives on feelings or beliefs that are opposite so for example here in the table below the direction is which item is true of your math class check the item that applies to you mark x the item that does not apply to you. So, for example, um, exciting So and boring. So, in, in, in exciting, which, uh, which category or which item that applies to you? So, for example, 1, 0, or negative 2. So, when you answer negative 1, that indicates that you are bored. So, when we say here 2, uh, we can say that it is uh, that you are very excited. So, and so on. Uh, we have here also a checklist. So, in checklist, as the name implies, um, the student simply check an item that is observed or present or possessed or that applies to um, he, him or her. So, the student is asked to evaluate the extent to which he she possesses a growth mindset. So, for example, here in our team, in our table, the direction is check the item which applies to you. Number one, I believe that intelligence can be developed. So you put a mark if you uh if that if you believe that the intelligence can be developed. If not, so don't put a mark. Okay, and so on. Next, here is we have the students written reflection. So in using this measurement tool, the teacher asks the students, for example, to write their personal thoughts and feelings um, on a subject or a topic given by the teacher. So, for example, why I like or dislike a mathematics. So, a reflection paper allows students to take a personal approach and express their thoughts on a given topic. So... That's the end of our first topic that covers the final examination. That so I hope you learned something in today's discussion. So if you have any questions or you have to clarify something regarding our topic, so don't hesitate to ask questions and you can drop it in our official group chat. So again, uh, please finish the video and I um, left your performance activity for uh, today's discussion. So, um, this discussion is very long and it covers a lot of topics. So, this will be our discussion for the whole week and I hope you comply to all of our performance activity. So, that's it. So, I hope you learned something and see you again in our next discussion. Thank you very much. God bless. So, this is the performance activity for our lesson 8. So, again, answer the following questions. This is consists of 80 points. Put your answer in the comment section below by following the format, your name, the block, or your cluster, and your answer. So, the deadline would be on June 7, 2023, 8 p.m. only. So, again, please follow the format on how to answer in the comment section below. So, again, um, here is the questions. Number one, what does it mean to assess learning in the affective domain? What are the soft skills? Why are they important and how are they assessed? And what are the methods of assessing learning development in the affective domain? And what are the tools used with these assessment methods?
So again, this is consists of 80 points in your performance activity.